Hey, 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 guys. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, everybody over here on Facebook Live. How are you guys doing? It is another episode of Speak Easy, the podcast where we talk about the behind the scenes of what it means to be a speaker or an author. I am your host, Alcides Pelzer, the voice coach, not a voice coach, but the voice coach, professional speaker, certified life coach, and Amazon bestselling author. Yes. Eight books published with another... 92 to go because guys you know that I am moving and shaking towards my goal of publishing a hundred books but first before I start this broadcast I want to say thank you thank you to all my viewers all my uh all the, the friends on my friends list everyone who reached out all the prayer warriors that reached out this morning um those that follow my my follow me uh, thank you for all of those that stepped up and prayed sent me messages in my inbox the children are safe it was a little scary in the beginning but definitely um made sure that we reached out to the right people and connected with the right people in order for us to um find out the information that we needed and, and what steps to take for our children to be safe um for those of you that don't know what i'm talking about this morning there was um uh, there was word being spread that there was a hey marlin um hey grace there was a student who was uh threatening to bring a gun to school and telling other students not to come to school so uh of course when we got the information reacted on it uh the police were called the the schools were called hey renee Schools were called, police were called, and the children are safe. Hey, Kendra, um, hey, sis, and the children are safe. Hey, Elton, um, they are safe. Uh, the police have taken care of the situation, and there was a police presence at the school just to be on the safe side because it also was said that, of course, that the young man who is in ninth grade, um, after he would get out of school, he would normally go over to the middle school and wait for someone that he would be walking home. So it made for a very interesting and real situation this morning because um, I have three at the high school and one at the middle school. So definitely wanted to make sure that they were okay and safe. Good morning, Melissa. No, good morning. Good afternoon, Melissa. Wanted to make sure that they were okay and safe. And I did make sure... Um, that we we made sure that they were okay and safe. Listen, we got a team on this. Not new to this and true to this. Mom, Mama Mo truly kicked in. It, it set my whole schedule off <laughs> this morning. But Mama Mo definitely kicked in and made sure that they got to school safely. Um, called the school to make sure everything was all right. And they have someone that will be going to pick them up as well. So that being said, I just wanted to make sure I said thank you. Uh, because we know that right now in the time that we are living in, it is a very, um, that's a very real and scary situation. Hey, Roderick. Hey, Mike. Hey, Melissa. That's a very real and scary situation um, for any parent to have to go through because we don't know what, um, you don't know what instance to take something seriously and what instance something may not be serious. And so you have to act on every every occurrence and so we did make sure that we acted on that occurrence thank you to all the parents from the school district who were posting on social media who were calling calling um the school calling the school district calling the police department it it definitely it shows this the solidarity between us as parents and that you know the safety that we want for our children so i appreciate that but today's topic today's topic oh let me close this blind because that is definitely going to irritate me um today's topic is all about you know storytelling and when we think about the art of storytelling when you learn the art of storytelling you can pretty much sell anything you can sell yeah i always go back and think about the um the vacuum salesman and how the vacuum salesman never came in to tell you that you should buy the vacuum. They never really said, this is the best vacuum. Well, they said it was the best vacuum ever, but they never really said, you know, 
this is what it is. They told you the story of what that vacuum could do. And so when you learn the art of storytelling and the power, oh, thank you. Um, when you learn the art of storytelling and the power that's, you know, within being able to do a, tell a great story, then you learn that you can pretty much sell anything. Now, some people use this for good. Some people use it for evil. <laughs> let's be, let's be honest. Um, it's just the, the way it is. Some people use it and tell stories and lies in order for them to cheat the system. Other people use it to be able to tell stories that empower people, uplift people, or bring people to a higher consciousness of themselves. And still others use storytelling just to be able to create a sense of joy and peace within people. So storytelling can do so many different things. If you learn how to use it properly, though, you can sell just about anything 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 hey Sophia hey Tracy and so as an as an author as a you know that of course we know that storytelling is important but when you think about being a speaker storytelling is so important I'm gonna tell you why as a storyteller as a speaker thank you guys that are coming in and sharing out the broadcast I greatly appreciate it and as a speaker when you learn the art of storytelling the proper way then what you do is you make yourself memorable in the audience's mind it's the storytelling it's literally um infusing parts of your own history parts of your own childhood parts of your life into the speech that you're giving that allows people to see that you are genuine they know they love the transparency but it also allows it brings them in it makes them want to get more of you it makes them want to get more of what it is that you're talking about what it is that you're selling if it's a course if it's a book if it whatever it is they want more but they only want more because you brought them in through a story now this is the problem is that people some people suck at telling stories let's just be honest and so they're they suck at telling stories and then they just try to you know figure that people since they told a story even though they weren't good at it they think people are just going to want to buy from them it doesn't work when you share a story with people it can be the story of your journey it can be the story of any i mean anything when you're sharing that story it literally opens up an opportunity for the conversation to move toward a sale it can be the a purchase of a book it can be the purchase of a t-shirt it can be the per listen it was a story that was told that made people want to buy the, you know, how people always get the little bracelets and I'm a survivor or I'm this or this, that. I mean, whatever the bracelet says, they bought the bracelet because of the story that was attached to the bracelet. Now, for some of you, you're like, okay, but I don't have a story. Uh, I beg to differ. Everybody has a story. People don't want to always share their story because, you know, we're in this society where, oh, I don't want people all in my business. I don't want everybody all up in my business. Well, let me tell you something about your business. <laughs> when you allow people to come and see behind the veil, it makes them more than just a potential customer. It makes them more than just a potential client. It makes them someone who is connected to you. When they get to see behind the veil and they see that you are someone that went through divorce and they've gone through divorce or, or are in the midst of a divorce, it connects them to you. Because guess what? Let's be honest. Let's be real. Come on, right? It makes you relatable. Listen, come on. Come on. I tell people all the time that literally, if you are not telling the story, you're not connecting with your audience. Think about it like this. Somebody that comes to you without having any children that attempts to tell you how to take care of your children. How does that work, Sway? <laughs> I'm honest. I'm real. How does that work, Sway? Now, granted, there are those, the, the, there is an exception to the rule. The exception to the rule is those that have gone and taken the training to learn how to take care of a child, what a child goes through and the things like that. But still, even if they have taken the training, if they do not have children, then they are going off of book knowledge, not necessarily 
real circumstances and real, you know, real life things that are going on. Hey, Cheryl. And so they're not going off of what has really happened as opposed to somebody who they are telling you, come on, nothing like experience. There are people that are telling you, no, 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 no. I tried that. That didn't work. Now, I, if somebody tells me they tried something and it didn't work, then I want to I want to be in that conversation more because I want to know well, what part of it didn't work for you. And, you know, well, how did you try it? When did you try it? You start a conversation. So don't you think that if you do storytelling when you're doing an event or selling a book that people are going to want to start and expand on the conversation that they're having with you? Don't you think that people would want to say, hmm? Ah, I didn't try that one yet, but how did it work out for you? See, that's how good books are sold. That's how, you know, good programs are sold. It's because of, it's because of the storytelling. Now, granted, I've had people that have connected with me because they found, they found me on social media. They connected with my journey or my testimony, and they've been following me ever since. Now, some people I've met them in person. Some people I haven't. It's okay. Oh, thank you, Sophia. Hey, Rosina, how are you? And listen, they may not have seen me face to face yet, but guess what? There's something about my story that makes all the difference. And I come to you because I still, even in 2018, I have still been coming across women who are scared to tell their story. Even in 2018. See, 2018, where we're now talking about AI robots and sex robots and things of that nature, you're still scared to tell your story. Happy Tuesday, we're still scared to tell our story. In a time where literally technology has put us in the place of I can be in front of thousands of people by just hitting a go live button we're scared to tell our story and I think a lot of times it's connected to the fact that we don't realize the impact of what that story will have on people I'll let y'all marinate on that one real quick <laughs> I'll let y'all marinate on that one real quick because when you start to realize just how powerful your story can be, you realize just how powerful the words and the, the experiences that you have had can be on the next person. Listen, come on. You'll be storytelling all over the place. You'll be like, ooh, I want to talk about this and I want to tell you about that. <laughs> and it, it, listen, it kind of bubbles on the inside of you and it, Literally, you want to share. You want to encourage people. You want to tell people about what you've been through. Now, for those of you that have been talking about this is your year. Hello, Tamal. How are you? For those of you that have been talking about this is your year. For those of you that have been talking about that this is the moment that you have been waiting for. That this year is not going to be like last year, new year, new me. I'm doing something great this year. I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to accomplish that. What are you waiting for? See, now is your moment to start telling your story. See, a lot of us think that we have to that we have to be at the end of our story to tell our story. See, that's the other thing. A lot of people think I have to be near the end of my story to start telling people my story. No, no, no. Because there's pieces of your story right now that you've already been through that can help somebody. There's pieces of your story right now that can encourage somebody else, that can help uplift somebody else, just make somebody smile for Christ's sakes. Listen, y'all know I'm always, always, right? Always telling y'all about the little things that are going on in my home, the little things I'm going through with my family. Y'all know I got, I'm a single mom of four teens. Listen, listen, I got a story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know that I even do stuff. Y'all know I'm silly. And so I do all types of stuff. Uh, my sisters today, was was <laughs> they were trying their best to stay home, y'all. 
But I said, no, I wanted y'all to make sure y'all went so y'all didn't miss anything. So yeah, they went to school and you know, we just made sure that somebody was there to drop them off. I was there dropping them off and somebody would be there to pick them up. We, we not playing no games, but it really, you know, I, I, when you think about the story, it relates to so many other people because there's so many people out there that their story didn't end the same way my story did. The person wasn't captured in enough time or there may be people after me who look at that post and say, that's my story right now. What did she do to be able to stay calm? What did she do to be able to... Um, to be able to still joke with her teens and and still have that conversation of you know what it what people are going through especially our our teens cuz can we be honest right now i can i can honestly say that our teenagers our youth our youth are going through hey marsha our youth are going through so many different things that we as adults have not even gone through they are going through so many things emotionally mentally physically and spiritually that we have never even touched some so when they're going through things like this and we see things like this come up that was a part of my story today it was not a part of the story that I wanted to happen and I'm thankful that it went the way that it did and it didn't become connected or similar to some of the other stories that are out there hey mahogany how are you and it didn't it didn't resonate with some of the other stories that were out there that ended on a whole different other note. I'm excited about that. But I want to say to you that me telling my story empowered some other people. And even though my story was just what happened today, it was just that piece that I shared, by all means, you sharing even the smallest piece of your story can make a difference. It was that one person who made that one post and shared it out that literally the post went viral and went and was shared out, I think, over a thousand times. Exactly. The story was shared out over a thousand times. And again, because I'm thankful, I, I cannot tell y'all just how thankful I am that this story did not turn out the way some others have turned out. I get to see my children when they get home today. But by still putting it out there, it may have opened up the eyes of somebody else who there are still people in this world that think, Oh, that could never happen to me. See, that's the other thing about storytelling. Is it shows people the realities of life. See, everything is not always going to be kittens and coddles and unicorns and rainbows. And I wish it would because, listen, that's me. <laughs> Y'all know I'm giggles and rainbows and clouds and candy. I can't do no candy though. Shh, don't tell my personal trainer I get in trouble. I can't handle candy. <laughs> hey, Lisa. Hey, Marilyn. I can't handle candy right now. But the reality is, is that I would, I would want for every story that I tell to be so amazing. I would want it to be so amazing. But guess what? It's not always going to be. But even with the story that I told this morning, what you know what I was selling this morning? I was selling community. I was selling empowerment. I was selling strength. Because there was some parent out there and this, this is what touched me the most, is there was some parent out there that may not have gotten a phone call or a text. There's some parent out there that may not have never seen the Facebook post. There was some parent out there who they may not have seen it initially, but from every person that shared it out, they got a glimpse of it. Somebody shot, screenshotted it and sent it to them via text or so many different ways. There's, it, it, I sold community. 
because nobody was worrying about who they were sharing it out to. They weren't sharing it out to only certain communities. They weren't sharing it out to only certain people. No, it was sharing it out to all of the parents who had children at their school. It showed unity. That's what I was selling. Selling solidarity. That literally, that we could come together to support, to connect, to educate. And so many people are literally in life because of how they were raised, because of whatever. They don't get that. But that's when I, with me telling that this morning, me doing that set, that little storytelling, that little snippet of my morning, and that snippet, listen, it changed my whole morning. Let's talk about that. But <laughs> it changed up my whole morning, my whole day. But Definitely sharing that little snippet, it sold unity. See, I'm not always talking about selling something where I'm trying to get a dollar sign. I'm trying to get, that, you know, paper that fold and, and, and jingle and, you know, all that. It's good to get it by all means. But there's some other things that you sell when you storytell. There's some other things that you can sell, including empowerment. See, empowerment comes at a cost. Y'all ain't ready. Empowerment comes at a cost. It does. Empowerment can be, is the, oh my goodness, it's, it can be so rich because it can change so many. We think about the dollar signs that can change people. We think about how having the finances can change your whole mindset. But can I tell you that empowerment has that same power? Empowerment has that same power to infect the world, to affect change, to change something. To light that spark, empowerment has that same, that same strength. That's it. When you share your utmost painful moments, hey Thea, you share your utmost painful moments, you create change. You create change and that change is amazing. Hey Sean. You create change, and that change is amazing. What are you watching? Oh, I'll tell you about it, Rhonda. Okay. But that's what it was about. It was not just selling, oh, my goodness, please help me. Or, you know, because, I mean, and you have some people that that's, that's where they're at. That's fine. But storytelling goes so much further. And when you learn the power of storytelling, then you'll understand that it's not just to sell. Yes, it can. You, if used properly, it can be used to sell a program and to sell a process and to sell a class and to sell a webinar and sell a book and sell a t-shirt and a mug and everything else out there under the sun. Hey, Tarika, it can be used to sell so many different things. But the reality is, is that storytelling can sell hope. Storytelling sells empowerment. Storytelling sells peace. When done right. It sells hope. When done right. There's somebody out there that literally is waiting for you to be the one to share your story and you'll never know until you actually share it. You never know the lives that you'll change. You'll never know the doors that you'll open up for people. You never know the clouds that you will move out of somebody's way for them. 
That's it. That's right. Shared pain that can be understood. Come on. Hey, Lorraine. Yes, it does. It definitely brings people together. And so this morning, I connected with some people that are in my city, in my town, that I had never met before. I did. Hello, Lisa. It I, Literally, I connected with people who were right here where I am, who, whose children go to the same school my children go to, simply because of what that was, what was going on this morning. Understand the power of your storytelling. Hey, Dr. Clay, understand the power of your words. Understand the power that you have within you. Yes, like I said, you can use storytelling to sell a book. You can use it to sell a t-shirt, a, a mug, or anything else. But you can also use it to sell hope. You can also use it to, to sell empowerment. Think about it. You can also use it to sell change. If done right. But you have to understand. Hey, Dr. Clay. So uh, for those who are coming in, I'll do a brief re recap. This morning, uh, there was a, a post that went out about a young man who had made um, a, basically a threat last night. Um, about coming to the school with a gun and um, was telling children not to come to school. And it went around. Parents uh, found out about the post. The post was on Snapchat. Snapchat. Parents found out about the post. It's at the high school where my children go. And I shared it this morning. And, you know, people were reaching out to me via my inbox. People were reaching out um, on the post and sending prayers. Hey, Rio. Um, hey, Faye. And, you know, reaching out, sending prayers. And, and I said, you know, when I sat down and really thought about it, I said there was a reason why I shared out the post. And I said it's, it's all connected to storytelling because when you realize the power within storytelling, you understand that it can do so many other things. And so because one person shared that story, other people shared it, and I think it was shared a, a good number of times, but it connected the whole community because we were wanting to make sure that our children were safe. There were some parents that couldn't, you know, they, they, they couldn't take their child to school, so their child stayed home. There were parents that were just like, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with you going to the school to see, you know, if it no matter what they said, I didn't feel comfortable. And of course, the school did a very good job of connecting with the parents and saying, you know, what they were going to do and how they were moving forward. They, uh, if I think if the children missed today, they did not get marked absent. Um, I know that with me, I had called prior to and uh, because I had called, they were automatically going to mark my children as being um, as a uh, being okay like they were gonna they weren't gonna mark them <laughs> they wasn't gonna get in trouble for missing the day but you know once they told me that everything was okay I just went ahead and, and took them to school um but it's something to think about because again your storytelling whatever you've been through the pain the the joy the confusion the depression the things that you are holding on to literally they can connect a community and that's what it did it connected a community storytelling has that opportunity it has that when i tell people about the fact that i you know that i am a victor over molestation and that my girls are victors over molestation literally it connects a community that's what it does. Hey, Takiya, it connects a community. And so as you build and strengthen that community, you also build and strengthen the trust and and the understanding that people can go beyond where they were or where they currently are. You build something greater for them to, to invest in. You build something greater for them to believe in. You build something up. Why do people follow these different celebrities? Why? Because they some of them, they like the talent. They like what they're doing. But guess what? It's the story. They love hearing that rags the riches story. They Why do you think, hello, why do you think 
444 <laughs> and Beyonce Lemonade sold so many copies and were it was so like uh people were like running after it. Why? Because it was a story. The same way that people will buy a story a quote unquote ratchet story is the same way that they would buy that same they want to they want the story when they're buying music. What are you buying? Now that can be a uh, topsy turvy one because some people just buy music for the the beat, but that's real. That's honesty. But <laughs> in all reality, look, you're buying the story. You're invested in that particular person because of their story. Let's be honest. That's what it is. You're invested in their story. That makes you want to run and pay how much? How many dollars? For for Beyonce tickets or Jay-Z tickets, how many dollars are they? How many dollars? <laughs> that makes you want to run and buy tickets because you're invested in the story, in their story. Guess what? There's somebody waiting and willing to be invested in your story just as much as theirs. There is. There's somebody waiting to be invested in your story just as much as you're invested in their story. You just got to open your mouth that part I know that's the part that people don't want to hear that's people that's the part people don't want to talk about they don't want to talk about sharing the story they don't want to talk about going live and doing all of that they don't want to talk about that part but the reality is is that's what it's about you know I'm doing this tele summit on the 27th and I'm excited about the Tele Summit because it's giving authors the the platform to show their word, their power of words, and to empower people from different aspects because every author is not the same. Everybody's not writing about the same things. Every publisher is not publishing the same type of books. This the reality is listen, a lot of people have niched down on what they talk about. And this Telesummit gives you the opportunity to go and speak before people and show them exactly what you have to offer. It will be live on Facebook. It will be live because you'll be able to come in the Zoom if you register and you'll get the replay if you register. Hey, Carol. But for those who are authors who are joining and being on this platform, literally, they get an opportunity to be in front of an audience of so many different people. Not only are they in front of the audience that will be at the Telesummit, but they also will be in front of the audience for the Love My Voice tour. That I have literally solidified everything for the Love My Voice tour, put it all together, decided exactly what we're going to be doing. Y'all, Y'all ready for this? Dun, 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 dun. Y'all always ask me, listen, how did you write the books? How do you write so many books so quickly? I did eight books in two years. And hey, Damon, hey, Carol, you always ask me, oh my goodness, how do you um, always come up with content so quickly? And what? It, listen, we are about to go in. We are about to go in for a one day conference in several different cities up and down the east coast yeah and then and then because i've already been connecting with some people over on my west coast side we'll be taking it over to the west coast as well so i'm excited i'm excited so you got the love my voice tour you got the power of words telesummit that's coming up if you are an author or an well, this one is just for authors. If you are an author and you would love to be on it, then you would go to bit.ly forward slash word, power word summit. Word power summit. <laughs> I think I just said that backwards. Oh my jippers. I think I just said that backwards. I think it's power words, word power summit. Yeah, that's what it is. So it's, it's bit.ly, look at me all over the place right bit.ly forward slash word power yeah word power summit i'm super excited there's only 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 there was only 16 slots available three slots are already taken so if you're going to get a slot by all means you need to go register 
Um, Sophia, I think you're signed up um, on my podcast for an interview. If you've, uh, if you've already had an interview on my podcast or you're signed up to do an interview on my podcast, there's a special discount for you. Just inbox me and I'll give you the discount code, but there is a special discount. But with that, you do get, literally, you get your own, you get a the clip that you get your clip, your 15 minutes that you speak, you get that and add it to it will be your headshot. It'll be your logo. It'll be your book. All of that will be added to it. Oh, thank you, Dr. Clay. You definitely want to make sure that it's something that you're a part of. Because again, like I said, you get that opportunity to be in a telesummit. You get that 15 minute video that goes directly to you. Or if you need me to do clips of it, I can do clips of it. You get that, and then you're also in the booklet for the tour as one of the booklet sponsors. So that is a great opportunity as well, because again, right now, as of right now, the tour is six cities for the first grouping. It'll be another five or six cities for the second grouping, and you'll be in there for all of that. So you get that opportunity. Um, there's one that's the one that's happening this month, and then another one will be coming in another three months or so it'll be about once a quarter um but a great opportunity because i understand the power of words i understand exactly what words can do for people and what they've done for me i know what they've done for the people in my community i know what like i see it so many times it won't let me it's doing its own thing okay i probably said it wrong <laughs> hey Damon, I will be back in Atlanta, Damon, in July. I'm speaking at an event in July in Atlanta, and then I I'll be coming back to Atlanta for the Love My Voice tour later on this year. I'm excited about that. But again, it's all about that storytelling, and that's going to be a part of what we talk about on this Tele Summit. Is that listen, y'all been struggling. Y'all been out here struggling for what? To tell y'all story for what? Y'all still scared? Why are we still scared? Why are we still scared to share what it is that we've been through? Why are we still scared to empower the world? Hey, Tanya May, how are you, sis? Why are we still scared? And so now is the opportunity. Now is the time for you to stop being scared. So bit.ly forward slash word power summit. I think I said that right, right? Yes, I did. <laughs> And it won't let me pin it. Facebook is doing its own thing, but that's okay. Uh, bit.ly forward slash word power summit. And definitely a great opportunity, a great experience. And whatever, you know, so it's going to cut off at the end of this week. And whoever is not registered by then, that's just it. Because I want to make sure that I give those that register, I give them the full 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 exposure that they are going to need and that they desire they also get information listen they also get a shout out on the podcast so far we have stevie aisha mills who is the pr <laughs> yes rock your it factor pr person we have dorothea who is the exit strategist i love it i love it i love it I love it. I love it. We also have Yolanda Poe, who is uh, the author of Mass Darkness. So guys, literally, we already have some amazing authors that will be on there. And they'll be each be talking about something different. And that's what's going to make it so powerful. <clears throat> like we, we think about, you know, when we think about a telesummit, you're always thinking about all of these entrepreneurs doing telesummits and coming and talking. And hey, Der hey, Diedrich, how are you? Um, you always think about all of these uh, entrepreneurs coming together to do a telesummit. But this one is authors. And I, I keep telling you all all the time that as an author, as a speaker, you are still an entrepreneur. So there is something that you need to tell the world. And... This telesummit is your opportunity to do that. bit.ly forward slash word summit, word power summit, word power summit. <laughs> For the power of words, author telesummit coming up 
uh, January 27th. Exciting, exciting. So I am about to get some things done, get some more work done for today. I will be back on later on today. Of course, if you're catching this via replay, I appreciate my replay viewers. Don't forget that even on the replay, your shares, your invites, your reactions still count. And, and by all means, don't forget that I appreciate it and I always come back and talk to you guys in the comments. And if you're catching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I definitely appreciate that. And <laughs> let me know how you like this particular episode. Now, if you are an author or a speaker and would love to be interviewed on my platform, by all means, bit.ly forward slash speakeasy podcast, all lowercase. That's bit.ly forward slash speakeasy podcast, all lowercase, in order for you to get a slot for you to be interviewed on the Speakeasy podcast. I am your host. Ah, Alta V's Pelzer, the voice coach, not a voice coach, but the voice coach. And until next time, don't forget to press it out. See you guys.